What's up all you lovely people? Welcome back or welcome for the first time if this is your first time here. Thank you so much for stopping by. It really does mean a lot to me. Today we have episode one of a new series I'm starting. You saw it in the title, you saw it in the thumbnail. We'll talk more about it. Stick around. You're afraid of dying. How do you know? You've never tried it before. All right, like I said, you saw it in the title, you saw it in the thumbnail, you know what's going on. Let's let's talk a little bit more about this, though. My Life in Horror. That's what I'm calling this series. Uh, this is inspired by some uh, ads, actually, I saw on social media. Uh, I kept seeing them around. It was, say, it was something like, oh, do you know the highest grossing film the year you were born or number one at the box office the year you were born and i'm like i don't know that i'm not going to click on the ad but i don't know what it was and i started thinking oh it would be really cool to to go back and do like you know highlight what movies what horror movies specifically were doing well or popular every year of my life so i'm calling it my life in horror it's going to be weekly we're going to start with the year i was born 1990 we're going to highlight, you know, a couple different categories of horror movies in each week. And then, you know, next week is 91. Week after that, 93. All the way through 2024. And by the time we get to 2024, should be enough movies out there to where we can do like a, you know, put an asterisk in the title and be like, so far. Uh, now, there is a couple things I want to clarify with this. Uh, one being, this is going to be more mainstream movies. Because, the, you know, the categories, uh, one category is going to be best, you know, highest box office. Now, you can't really do that with movies that don't go to theaters. So that kind of takes out some B movies. It takes out, like, fan-made movies. Because they're not going to theaters, so they're not going to be able to compete in that category. Uh, another category is going to be... Uh, I am not IMDb rating, but uh, Rotten Tomatoes rating. I will be using the audience score, though. I don't like using the credit score on on anything. As an example, one of the movies that came out in 1990, I was looking, and there was like 134 ratings on the critic side. But there was 50,000 plus ratings in the audience side. I'm like, why would I take the critic's rating on this? There's, first of all, it's significantly less people. And they're critics. Like I, I don't. I'm not looking for a score based on a critic review. I'm looking what the audience thinks because that's a more accurate example of, or, or a more accurate representation of, of how people feel about the movie. So, but once again, that doesn't really work with like underground type movies because, you know, Rotten Tomatoes probably isn't aware of them. If they are, there's probably not a lot of people voting on it. So these are going to be more mainstream. There, there is one other category where non-mainstream movies can fit in. So if they do fit in, I'll put them there. Uh, and that's pretty much all the caveats with this series and how I plan to do it. Uh, so with that, let's jump into the first category. All right. First category is going to be highest grossing horror movies of 1990. That's that's the category. It's what kind of inspired me to do this all along. So that's the first place I'm going to start. All right. And at number three, we have Predator 2. Wasn't expecting to be up there. Uh, it, it's not a very well liked movie. If I'm being honest, you know, the audience didn't really care for it, but this isn't about audience score. This is just about box office. Danny Glover, Gary Busey, Bill Paxton, it was set in L.A. It was, in my opinion, not a worthy sequel to the original Predator, but I think the original Predator was good enough that it got people to the box office to see this movie. And by the end of 1990, after this thing had been out, it had grossed $57.1 million. All right, and the second highest grossing horror movie of 1990 is actually an adaptation from a book. An adaptation from a Stephen King book. Misery, starring Kathy Bates and Scott Kahn. Uh, I, there's not enough good things to say about this movie. It's kind of... I mean, universally accepted as a great movie. Kathy Bates gives a performance of a lifetime. It's creepy. It's eerie. Everything about it is is executed well. The po like down to the poster. The poster is amazing for this movie. Cannot say enough good things about it. And at the end of the year, audiences showed up 
for this movie, uh, it had, it grossed sixty one point two million dollars. All right, time has come for number one. The highest grossing horror movie of nineteen ninety is Flatliners, starring Kiefer Sutherland, uh, Julia Roberts, Kevin Bacon. If you haven't seen this movie, go see it. Uh, of course, we're talking about the original. They remade it a few years ago. That one's you know take it or leave it. The original is amazing though uh if you haven't seen a quick synopsis uh, it's about some five medical students i believe uh who are kind of they're very curious about what happens after death so they devise a way to essentially kill each other in a controlled environment give them a little bit of time dead and then bring them back this brings about some creepy unforeseen circumstances though uh, that's all i'm going to tell you and it's a fantastic movie, and audiences agreed because they showed up to see it. And it just narrowly beats out Misery with $61.4 million. So there you go. There are your three highest grossing horror movies of the 1990. All right, category two is, as I said before, it's going to be audience score. Now, this is Rotten Tomatoes, but it is the audience score, not the tomato meter or whatever the hell. It's what the audience thinks. And at number three, we have a movie which I... I might consider it the most fun movie on this list, and that's Tremors, starring Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward. I This might be a little controversial, because some people might consider this more of a sci-fi or more of an action. I mean, it's got, it's got a lot of different elements from different genres in it. There's a little romance, there's a lot of comedy in there. Um, but I do think it fits within the horror genre, and I mean, Google says it, IMDb listed as horror, so... I'm definitely counting it on this list. And it is the third highest ranked according to audiences of 1990 with 74%. The second highest rated horror movie of 1990 is a film that I'm going to be honest, I haven't seen. It's called Jacob's Ladder. Now, I know a little bit about it. Uh, I know it stars Tim Robbins. I know it's about a Vietnam veteran who's having some mental health issues. I know a lot of people like it. It's... Um, it's universally like accepted as a good horror movie or a good movie in general, uh, and I mean the the Rotten Tomatoes score reflects that. Uh, it's sitting at a solid eighty four percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Once again, though, I can't really give much in my way of an opinion because I don't ha you know I haven't seen it. So number two, Jacob's Ladder, and the highest rated audience score horror movie of nineteen ninety is one we just talked about a second ago. It's Misery. Kathy Bates, Scott Kahn, I already talked about it, so I'm not going to say too much here because I don't want this video to run long. But yeah, it's the highest rated horror movie of 1990, and, and I, there's a reason why, y'all. It's just a damn good movie. And the score, once again, reflects that. The score, it's sitting at a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, for a horror movie, that's just amazing. For any movie, that's amazing, but a horror score of 90%, I think, is is excellent and i'll also point out here that the critic score is actually a 91 so this is one of those movies where the critics and the audience they kind of sync up and I, there's no reason you know there's no mistaking why that is because it's just a damn good movie so there you go there's your top three rated horror movies of 1990 now the third and final and most personal category and this is going to be my top three favorites just my personal favorites of 1990 we've already talked about one of them at least so uh let's go ahead and get that one out of the way and it's number three for me and that's tremors i i love this movie uh it, it's not one might say it's a guilty pleasure but this is a movie i can put on and enjoy anytime the one scene that always stuck out to me that just is kind of seared into my mind is when they're going to get fred and he's uh i think it's fred god i the name might i might be snaking on the name but the guy who was pulled into the ground and they just see his hat on the ground and they go over and they pick up his hat and his face is sticking out of the ground for some reason that image scared me to death as a kid i just i was like completely traumatized by that but this is a this is a movie i can watch over and over and i just i really enjoy it so my number three is tremors and my number two is actually another sequel that came out in 1990 and that's child's play 2 and this is something i might I, i'm a little different with with chucky movies uh when it comes to 
like ranking them. I actually think the second one is better than the first one. And anytime I do a ranking, the second one is always pretty high. And the reason is, the main reason at least, there's just more Chucky in part two. Part one, obviously, it's the introduction to the character, and we have a lot of got a lot of time where he's not being Chucky. He's still trying to stay incognito. You know, the movie's building the mystique around around the character and the doll. Is it the doll? Is he alive? Is he not? But part two is not that way. Part two, Chucky's just balls to the wall the whole time, and I think that makes it a better, more entertaining movie. Uh, and that's one of the reasons it's uh, it's up there for me. It's it's definitely for me ranked above the first Child's Play. But uh, that's my number two release of 1990. All right, everyone, we've reached number one. My favorite horror movie of 1990, and it's kind of cheating, but I'm gonna say it. And that's the first adaptation, um, the first adaptation of the Stephen King book. Now, the reason it, it's kind of cheating is technically. It, from 1990, is not a movie. Uh, Most people think it's a movie. Most people don't know. But it was actually released as a two-part miniseries on TV. Like, there's no box office numbers for this movie because it never went to theaters. It was released straight to TV and uh, in two parts. But they put them together and it, you know, it formed like a three, uh, three and a half hour or something like that movie that we watch in one go. And I believe it was filmed similar, um, filmed the same way the, the the remakes are, where it's the young versions of the kids in the first movie, and it's the older uh, versions of the characters in the second movie. But they didn't release them in the theaters. They released them on you know as two episodes, and then combined that into a movie. But so that might be kind of cheating. However, that's what I'm going with. It 1990, Tim Curry in that role kind of made Pennywise the Clown iconic. He brought so much to it. He set the bar for, for, you know, scary clowns. He's just, I don't know, man. Everything about that movie was great. It's a frequent rewatch for me, and I just, it never gets old. So that's it. That's why I got out of my number one. There you go, y'all. That was that was 1990 in a nutshell. Now, there are a lot of other movies that came out. If I didn't get to any of your favorites, they didn't show up in any of these categories, I'm sorry. I'd love to know what they are. What was your favorite uh, horror release of 1990? Throw it down in the comments. So this was a hard list to put together, at least my favorites, because there was a lot more on there. Exorcist 3, which I think is incredibly underrated. Uh, the remake of Night of the Living Dead, directed by Tom Savini. There's so many that came out that I wanted to talk about, but this move, you know, this video would end up being 30 minutes long if I did that. And I'm trying to keep these a little shorter. And that's why I'm just going top three in each category. So there you go, y'all. That's 1990. Thank you so much for sticking with me this far. If you have in the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, really do appreciate it. Uh, Maybe subscribe if you haven't. That really helps me out. Uh, And with that, 1991 will be next week. I love you all. Have a great, safe week. Oh. I hate goodbyes. <laughs> 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 <laughs>